And I think we all know the answer that there's a great deal of pain and loss in adoption, and it's very important that we are here today and that we continue this good fight for what is rightfully ours, the names of our children, the whereabouts of our children, our parents, our histories. And it's, it's truly amazing to me that people in this country really don't realize how many people are searching and how important that is. A lot of people feel that you can automatically find your families if you want to do it when you're at the age of majority. D.C. Chapter 5. It is now the fifth year, five years of walking, of marching on our nation's capital for adoption rights. Five years, approximately 1,250 miles. I salute and I bow to those who have truly sacrificed themselves upon the highways and byways to make this annual pilgrimage for adoption rights. Their selfless dedication to our cause, year after year, through the heat, humidity, rain, and cold, through the dust, dirt, and fumes of our strictured world, expresses the true spirit of the Bodhisattva. You care for and carry the rest of us sentient beings, kicking and screaming in our own futile, self-centered excuses to the nirvana of adoption rights. Thank you for caring, for walking these many miles, singing, shouting, and chanting, talking and arguing and expressing our rights our right to our right. When a mother is forced to choose between her child and the culture, there is something abhorrently cruel and unconsidered about that culture. A culture that requires harm to one's soul in order to follow the culture's proscriptions is a very sick culture indeed. One of the least spoken about oppressions of women's soul lives concerns millions of unmarried or never married mothers throughout the world including the United States, who in this century alone were pressured by cultural mores to hide their condition or their children, or else to kill or surrender their offspring, or to live a half-life under assumed identities and as reviled and disempowered citizens. Slave class in this country were slaves. In the 40s, in the 1940s, in the state of Maryland, the adoption records were placed with the land records because it was considered a transfer of property. And my feeling is that the closed records today stem from that attitude to protect the new owners. So what I want is to be recognized as legitimate, a legitimate person, no longer a slave, to be bought and sold and not have any recourse or right to find out where I really belong, but a free person. And in my search, I've been told two things. I've been told that the records are sealed to protect the birth mothers, and I've been told by birth mothers that they're told the records are sealed to protect us, the adoptees. And I want to say that birth parents and adoptees don't need protection from each other. We need... We need to be protected from the legislators who have the attitude of this illegitimacy, who, have, who are the ones keeping us apart. That's where we need protection. We can take care of ourselves as far as our family problems. Thank you. A second person has died uh -huh. infected by this sometimes to search for their natural parents, and now some adoptees have brought their case to the nation's capital. They're urging lawmakers to write laws giving them easier access to birth records. As Channel 5's Chip Reed reports, the adoptees say keeping them from their real heritage is un-American. Yeah. It makes me feel like a real person. Like I, I belong somewhere and that I actually exist. After a lifetime of wondering who her mother was, 28-year-old Lisa Buono finally found her. It was the most important moment of their lives. It's a feeling you can't describe. I mean, to find somebody that's so much like you and so connected that we're finally together again. Peace was missing all those years. But Lisa and her mother say the fact that they found each other makes them two of the lucky ones. Most 
most of these people, for example, have spent years searching for a birth mother or a child. It's, it's painful. It's really painful. I want to know what she looks like. I want to know if I'm like her. I just want to find this out, and it's killing me. It's a search that's made vastly more difficult by government secrets. <laughs> In virtually every country in the world, once an adoptee reaches adulthood, he or she has the legal right to find out who his or her parents are. That is not true in the United States. In 47 states and the District of Columbia, those records are sealed forever. The Council for Equal Rights in Adoption wants to change that. They came to Washington to urge Congress to enact a law that would open adoption records. Organizations representing adoptive parents are opposed, arguing that putting natural parents in touch with their children would wreak havoc on families of adopted children. But organizers say adoptive parents have nothing to fear. Feel threatened, you know, they are always the, they're always the parents, you know. They were the caretakers, and they were there for 18 or 20 years. And adoptees aren't looking for, for new parents. They're looking for answers to who they are. Who says there's only one way to find those answers. As adoptees tend to feel like they either fell from the sky or just, you know, were magically created. And now I have a sense of being a human being for once. In Washington, Chip Reed, Fox News. I don't think I'll get it back. And Richard and Felicia really are my mom and dad. Are we breaking the law when we obtain what is rightfully ours? When you give up a child, are your rights to that child gone forever? Adoption is changing in this country, with biological parents refusing to simply disappear. On today's cover story, we'll look at adoption. Once a salvation for childless couples, now a battleground with victims on every side and birth mothers breaking the law. I'm Beth Tornator, and this is Broadcast News.